What's going on guys? So today I'm going to show you how to make a image carousel using modern CSS only. So right now I just have an empty project and I have my app div set in full screen with a background color. That's all I got. Then I have some data here. I have an array of objects and each object has a, a source for a picture and a description of that picture. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is create a carousel component here. And I'm just going to create the foundation for it. And then I'm going to render it over here in the application. Just like that. And so we can go over here and just get started on the carousel itself. I'm going to create a CSS file. Carousel.css. And I'll just import it into here. Just like that. And so the first thing we're going to do is actually um, declare that this div will be the carousel container. So I'm just going to do that. And then this carousel is going to take this data. So it's an array of objects. So here I'm going to um, destructure the props and then make sure to pass it in when I render this component. So I'm going to have to import this, um, this data that I had set up here. So I'm going to do import data and pass in the images like that. So I'm going to go back here and then I'm going to render a div called carousel. And then in here, we're going to map over the images because it's an array. And here we'll get an image. And then I would just want to return a div. And that div would be the carousel item inside of it we're gonna have an image tag and its source will be image.source and I'll just give it um, an alt text like image of carousel something like that and then we're gonna put a p tag and here we'll put image.title so we can render the description and then we're gonna have to give this a key because since we're mapping over this array, um, React wants us to put a key here. So we give this a key and we're going to need the index here. So image and index. The key here could be, I'll say index. And then I'll just stick the title in there. Oop, I meant image.title. Okay. So now we have our carousel and we got all of our images with the descriptions. Okay, so now we're going to need to do some styling, right? So I'm going to go over here to carousel CSS and I'm going to configure the carousel container. So I want this to be a width of 90%, but a max width of 500 pixels. And I want it to be a height of let's just say 50 percent we'll see how that is then i'll give a background color of that which is like darker so you can tell and then a display of flex and let's check it out in the html so we got this right here so we're gonna have to also do something similar to our carousel we want to give it a display of flex and there we go. And then we would have to do this. Um, we would have to go here and give this a height of 100% and a width of 100%. Like that. And then we can go in our app, in our app CSS. And I'm just going to center this. So I'm going to do display flex justify content center and align items center. And just to get things out of the way, I'm actually going to give everything a box sizing, a border box, a margin of zero and a padding of zero. This is optional. I just like to do this to have more control over stuff, but it's completely optional. Don't worry about that. Okay. So right now, We've made some progress. We have our container here. 
in our carousel and then we have all of the items right so let's start styling our carousel item so this we wanted to have a height of 100 or not the item sorry the image we wanted to have a height of 100% of its container and a width of 100% of its container as well like that and then we can give it an object fit of cover like that and so now we're going to want to actually style our carousel item so for this we can give it a display of flex a flex direction of column like that so you see here we have our um, carousel item and then it's a flex direction of column and it has the image and the paragraph tag right and so now we would go here and give this a flex grow of one a shrink of zero and a flex basis of 100 percent and there it's a full screen once again we want to make it so that you cannot scroll like that so we're going to go in our carousel and give it an overflow of overflow x of scroll so it's more like this right then what we want to do is give our carousel item a position of relative so that we can go in our carousel item uh, p tag or a little header and give it a position of absolute and then we do bottom zero and text align center like that see um Well, instead of bottom, we can just do inset, auto on the top, zero on left, zero on bottom, and zero on right, like that. And that will be more concise. Let's get rid of this scroll bar down here. That's pretty annoying. So I'm going to go here and just, oops. I'm going to go here and do um, webkit scroll bar and give it a height of zero and a width of zero like that so there's no more scroll bar that means we can't scroll so we need some way to control this and before we go on I want to give this p tag a color of white and a font size of 2 rem and I'm not sure why it's not centering itself Oh, I got rid of the inset by accident. So yeah, we would need that. Okay. And let me just give this a padding block of one rem. There we go. Okay, so we have the whole layout already set up, but we can start making it so it's like draggable, right? It's going to be really easy to do that. So you see up here in the, in the carousel how it's overflow X of scroll. We would just want to make it a scroll snap type and then it will be X and mandatory. And then here it would be scroll behavior smooth. And then we would go into every child of it, every direct child and every direct child is basically the item. So we'll go into carousel item and do scroll snap align. And here we would just do start. So now when we go in mobile, so I'm going to click on this mobile uh, button right here. We can scroll and it snaps. See? And when I try to stay in the middle, it, uh, it just snaps to the next one. So that's the intended behavior on mobile. And now we have to do it on desktop. So on desktop right now, there's no way to go through the carousel. And we're going to fix that right now. So over here in our carousel, in our carousel container, we're actually going to make two divs like that. And then this first div is going to have a class name of carousel button. And it's going to be a left button. And then this one will be the same except right button. 
right here um, we don't see anything because they don't have any height or length to them so I'm gonna go down here and configure it so we call the carousel button and let's give it a height of 30 pixels and a width of 30 pixels let's give it a position of absolute and let's make sure our carousel container has a position of relative okay and then let's um, I'm gonna show you real quick so border one two pixels solid white Oh, they don't seem to be showing up. Where is where are these things? Oh yeah, uh, Z index has to be two. Okay, so they're right here, right? But I'm actually gonna do border right of two pixels solid white and border top. So then I'm gonna go here and do transform rotate forty five degrees. And then I'm going to go here to the left button and I'm going to be doing a border bottom of two pixels solid white, just like that. And then this one would be border left. And so I'm going to grab these two attributes right here and only apply it to the right button. There we go. And so now here I'm gonna do top is 50% to bring those uh, divs down. And then on the left one, I'm gonna do left is zero. And on the right one, um, you, you guessed it, right zero. There we go. And these divs are really white, so let me just change the color of them so I can actually see them a little bit better. And then I'm gonna go here and make this a cursor of pointer. So you can actually like, um, so the user can see that they can click on it. Then I'm gonna give, instead of a left of zero, I'm actually gonna give it a left of 20 pixels. And this one will have a right of 20 pixels, just like that. And these borders, they should probably be a little bit larger because I can barely see it. So there we go. That's a little bit better to see. So the last thing we got to do is go here and I'm just going to create a media query for when the width of the screen is less than 600 pixels. I want to select the carousel button and give it a display of none. And I'll let VS Code fill, um, format that for me. But yeah, when we're below 600 pixels, it's on mobile, most likely. Unless someone has a very small monitor, it's probably on mobile. Or if they just like put the screen too small. So that could be a problem, but I'm not going to address that problem. But if someone was on desktop and they like had a window like very small like that, then they wouldn't be able to use the carousel. So that's just something to be aware of. Anyways, we're gonna continue on. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna create a function to actually increment the carousel. So I'm gonna name it const increment carousel. And all it takes in is a delta value. So that will be either one or negative one. And in this function we would want to scroll our carousel through javascript but we don't have access to our carousel um, we could do a query selector but that's that's not really efficient we could simply just create a reference to that node in the dom so we could go here and do carousel is equal to use ref and then um get this carousel and give it a ref of carousel like that and then here we can go here and do if carousel.current we call this function the first thing we got to do is get the width of the carousel so we can scroll it by that width and we need to do this because the width of the carousel changes depending on the size of your window or the browser right it could be 500 pixels or it can be less right so we need to do this in a way that's more generic and modular so we need to do const width is equal to carousel.current.offset width like that 
And then what we can do is carousel.current.scroll2. And then this takes in as an argument. Um, the first argument is the position. So we would do carousel.current.scroll left. And this is basically the offset of the scroll. And we would do plus the width times delta. And then pass in zero as a next argument to this function. So what we're doing is that we're getting the scroll offset of this carousel and we're adding either negative of the width or positive of the width. That's basically all we're doing. So we're either subtracting by the width or we're adding by the width because multiplication goes first before this is being added. So now on these buttons or divs that are acting like buttons, we can go here and do on click, call the function that calls increment carousel. And this is the left, so it would do negative one. This one would be a positive, so that's all I gotta do. Let's test it out. There it is. Um, and really, you can just end the video right here. Like, if this is all you wanted, um, yeah, I hope this helped, but we're actually gonna improve this. So, one of the things I wanted to do to improve this is make it so that when you go all the way to the end, it actually goes around to the other end. So, to do that, what we can do is go up here and create a state. So I'm just gonna call this count and set count equals use state like that. I have to import that. And then here, what we would do is call set count and we get the previous count and we do count plus delta, right? And so basically we always have the count of which photo we're actually looking at. So then what we can do is, and I'm, I'm actually going to make this code better. So instead of doing this, if block here, I'm going to do if not carousel.current return. So I can get rid of this because I don't want to have uh, nested if blocks. So here, what we can do is if count plus Delta, is greater than images dot length minus one then that means we're at the far right end of this list and that means that we want to set count back to zero and we want to do this right here except we want to just scroll all the way to zero so we would go like this and then just return from that Else, if count plus delta is less than zero. So that means we've already reached the first item and we're trying to go further back. We'll do something similar here. We would set count to images dot length minus one. Like that. And we would do scroll to and something similar to this. And of course we need the width. So I'm gonna actually get the width up here like that. And so, so instead of doing times Delta, we would do times Delta and Delta is being, being multiplied by images dot length minus one like that. Okay. So this should work now. Okay, so it works on the far right and something's happening on the far left that's not intended. So that means something here. I can probably get rid of this parenthesis here. So I'm going to debug real quick. So I'm just going to console log the width and carousel.current.scroll left. So I can get rid of the scroll left completely. Okay, so it's something wrong with the scroll too. It's probably that I'm multiplying by delta. I forgot that I don't need to do that anymore. Okay, so it's working now. And yeah, I don't need to be multiplying by delta. I forgot about that. 
but yeah this is pretty much it and there's actually more things that we can do i'm just going to do one more thing before i leave this video off so you see how the text here is the same on all of them you can actually do something a little bit cooler than that which i actually want to do so we can make it that it has like a transition instead of just being static like that and that's what we're going to do right now so i'm going to go here and give this carousel item a class name class name is equal to if the index is equal to the count then the class name would be active else it wouldn't be uh, anything basically and why is this giving me an error no duplicate props allowed oh okay okay so that means I can just go like that instead. Like that. It still works as intended. But now um, the active carousel has the class of active on it. And we can do some cool stuff with that. So we can go over here. And what we can do is do dot carousel dash item dot active we get the p tag and give it an opacity of one and let it have normally an opacity of zero right we can give it a transition of all and let it be 0 0.3 seconds ease in and out Maybe this should just be on here. I forgot the seconds. Okay, it's a little too uh, fast. So let me just. Okay, and so here what we can do is a scale of 1.1. So we would do a transform of a scale 1.1. And here we would do a scale of zero like that. Oh, I broke something. Not only can we change the scale, but we can do a translate on the Y of 100 pixels, or sorry, negative 100 pixels. Uh, 40 there we go look at that that is cool and you know you can just keep doing stuff in this fashion but I think you got the point and let's check it out on mobile okay on mobile it doesn't seem to work because on mobile we're not using these buttons so this whole count thing is not happening so nothing's being set to active so what we actually want to do is put this in a media query so I'm just gonna grab this and stick it in this media query down here these the opacity of zero in the transition would also be in a media query so it would be in carousel item dot and just the normal P like that but then this media query would have to be backwards so it would the width would be bigger than 600 so then here we would do inline block and then here by default it'll have a display of none okay The transition we would have to keep it outside the query okay so this is working on desktop let's try mobile there it works on mobile as well all right so that's basically it um, if you enjoyed this little mini project let me know let me know if you have any suggestions in the comment section and I hope you have a great day I'll see you later